Hello and welcome to VOS Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Vungani. Thank you so much for joining us today. On this episode of Red Carpet, we have a photo studio capturing 100 years of Ghana's history. A South African artist goes from prison to painting and a 13-year-old Nigerian saxophonist speaks to us about his journey. Let's get on with the show. And let's start the show with some highlights of the latest entertainment news from around the world. In some film news, the much anticipated movie. And in some music news, Ghanaian rapper Black Sheriff has made history as he becomes the first Ghanaian musician to reach a 100 million streams milestone on streaming platform Boomplay. Black Sheriff joins other heavyweights including Banner Boy, Wizkid, Davido, Diamond Platinums, and others on Boomplay's Golden Club of Top African Music Stars. And in some more music news, Nigerian Afrobeat star Davido has announced his Are We African Yet Festival, a one-day event slated to take place at the State Farm Arena in Atlanta, Georgia on November the 18th of 2022. The singer took to social media to release an official statement about the upcoming festival that will include a lineup of artists like Kiss Daniel, One Day Call, Low J, Fields, Oxlade, and many others. A small family run studio in Ghana's capital, Accra, has been taking photographs ranging from intimate portraits to nation shaping events since 1922. It offers a unique insight into Accra's transition from colonial port to bustling metropolis. Let's check it out. For 100 years, a small, family-run studio has been preserving the people and places of Ghana's capital, Accra. Today, the Deo Gratius Photo Studio, founded in 1922 by J.K. Bruce van der Poy, is an archive of over 50,000 images. From glass plates to digital files, the photographs offer a unique glimpse of Accra's transition from colonial port into a bustling modern metropolis. It is a visual history that stretches back to before the birth of the nation. The studio is managed by Bruce van der Poy's granddaughter, Kate Tamaklo. The story they tell is about the history. Those days, the early days from when the slaves were taken out, we have the, the, the forts, we have pictures of the forts, we have pictures of the politicians, we have pictures of um, um, traditions, all of that really. So there's so much to tell, even the buildings. And that was the Deo Gratius collection ranges from intimate portraits to nation-shaping events. The studio's walls are home to the faces of the past from dock workers to independence leader Kwame Nkrumah. Disgraced US President Richard Nixon and Ghana's former colonial ruler, Britain's Queen Elizabeth, can also be found here. Daniel Tete, a historian who volunteers with Deo Gratius as an archivist, says if such photographs are not preserved, then the nation loses its memory. We live in the world, a dynamic world, and we must be conversant about no the entire history, the entire spectrum of history, what happened in the past. If you know what happened in the past, then you appreciate the present and then you'll be able to predict the future. What started as a mission to digitize the archive turned into a full-time job for Tama Klo. She took over from her father, the lifelong photographer Isaac Bruce van der Poy, when his eyesight began to fail. He says one must feel proud to have preserved a thing for a century. We we'll also feel very, very much happy that uh, our name has gone so far. And I think uh, that is not the end. In a lush garden on the outskirts of Accra, Tama Klo and her father flick through an album of their favourite prints. Among the photographs, one of Isaac. Camera in hand, he beams amid a crowd of people. His smile lives on. So too his father's legacy after 100 years. 
And now to some art news. Blessing Gobeni discovered art painting portraits of fellow prisoners during a nine-year jail sentence. It was recently showcased at a leading South African art fair. Let's take a look. Blessing Gobeni first picked up a paintbrush during a nine-year stint in prison. Now, the South African artist is getting ready for an exhibition in the UK's capital, London, in 2023. But the 35-year-old says at first he wasn't sure of his talent. I was like, ah, let me just push my time and kill the time by drawing uh, other inmates' portraits and designing birthday cards and writing messages. This month, Ngobeni's pieces were showcased at South Africa's FNB Art Joburg Fair. It's a leading contemporary art exhibition featuring artists from across the continent back after a two year hiatus linked to the global health crisis. Ngobeni's latest body of work is titled Spirit of Water Dancing. It features a set of antique armchairs and sofas inspired by an eerie discovery in 2016 of a chair in North Georgia allegedly stuffed with the hairs of slaves. I recreated the same story uh, using uh, the same coaches, you know, uh, printed the, my work in these coaches and stuff, stuff uh, in things that are very secretive to the people. But what I looked at also there, the beauty of these things that we, we have, these things that we own, lies uh, a secret, uh, lies DNA, lies memories, lies pain of the other people. The art fair has pioneered Pan-Africanism since inception. This year it featured exhibitions from galleries across the continent including Zimbabwe, Botswana, Ghana, Uganda and Nigeria. African music continues to grow and spread around the world. Millions are now familiar with genres such as Afrobeat and Amapiano. However, some musicians like 13-year-old Nigerian saxophonist Demilade Adepegba are finding success in other well-known and popular genres such as jazz. Red Carpet spoke to the young musician about his journey. Let's take a look. With the confidence of a seasoned professional, 13-year-old Demilade Adepegba, fondly called the bold one, serenades audiences on stages and in parks. So I started playing music when I went to church with my mom because she's in the choir. Then I saw, I now saw the saxophone. I was so amazed. I was so happy. So I got to my dad there and I asked my dad I want to play the saxophone. So he got me a teacher. Then he started playing keyboard because he told me I should have a keyboard because keyboard is the basic instrument of all instruments. So I started with the keyboard at the age of six. When I was seven, I started the saxophone. On his sixth birthday, he received the saxophone as a gift, and his music has taken off ever since. His parents discovered his love of music early on when he played with only musical toys. It feels so good. I'm always happy that uh, the boy that uh, I see as a baby, that each time we buy him toys, the toys that make music, they are the ones he plays with. So we, 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 that was the first uh, sign we, we saw in him. He bought him a saxophone, he bought him a keyboard, and now he, he plays so well. He has performed at various events while attending school, dazzling audiences with his stagecraft and mastery. It wasn't an easy journey at the beginning. Among other challenges, the young musician suffered from stage fright. He says many people discourage his parents from allowing him to pursue a career in music when he was just starting out. A lot of people always told my dad that I should stop playing this instrument because it might affect me in studies and my birth control. But we always came through and anytime I'm performing on the stage, I'm always scared because of stage fright. Then my mom told me one, one thing that anytime I'm performing, I should just look at the four heads of people. So since that day, I just been okay. The Bold One has shared the stage with notable Nigerian saxophonists such as BJ Sax, Micah Ramo, and international acts like Berklee College of Music graduates Godwin Lewis and Ariana Stanberry. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you so much for watching VOA's Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Vunganyi. For more of your entertainment news, check us out at voaafrica.com. We are also on Facebook, Instagram, and on YouTube. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, goodbye everyone.